Watching The Last of Us recently has reminded me With the almost immediate success of HBO's The Last of Us, with a confirmed season 2 and many more seasons, and it's been known to break that video game adaption curse, The Walking Dead and AMC still have a massive card to play. Let's get straight into it. Of course, before we do, make sure you press the like button, and make sure you subscribe if you're new. Telltale's The Walking Dead games are set in the comic universe of The Walking Dead, so Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes, for example, is in the TV universe, while his comic counterpart remains in the comic universe, that's where Lee is. So somewhere out there, there's a TV version of Lee. Now, The Walking Dead and AMC have done all kinds of things, like Dead in the Water, which was a spin-off to a spin-off for The Walking Dead. It provided cool but mostly unnecessary backstory. I think, if anything, it's underrated, but they just didn't market it enough. You probably don't know what it is. Then they made six episodes of Tales of the Walking Dead, which I think the concept is great. They weren't all horrible, they were just so mediocre, so scared of doing what made the Walking Dead good, of doing any simple concept, like an outbreak story. In fact, when we were close to getting an outbreak story, it turned into a fucking bridesmaid spin-off with death loops. What the Walking Dead needs, and what it does best, is simplicity, a story of the outbreak. And what better outbreak story than the story of Clementine and Lee? Episode 1 starts with the Atlanta skyline and Lee Everett in the back of a police car. Lee was a history professor, arrested for killing the man he caught his wife cheating with. Usually it's about now I get the, I didn't do it. Not for me. The car crashes, Lee wakes up. <laughs> The officer has been thrown from the car. Lee approaches him, but something seems off. He grabs the keys and unlocks his handcuffs when... Officer? <laughs> After being forced to put down the reanimated officer, he looks up to see a young girl. Help! Go get someone! She retreats. As more walkers start to surround him, he climbs over a fence to get away. <laughs> Hello? Anybody? Wonder if anybody's home. Explores the house. He hears a voice on a walkie-talkie. It's that same girl, Clementine. Daddy? Huh? Hello? You need to be quiet. Are you okay? I'm okay. They tried to get me. But I'm hiding until my parents come home. Where are your parents? They took a trip and left me with Sandra. They're in Savannah, I think. Where the boats are? See? Can you see me? I can see you through the window. Hi there. Did you kill it? I think something else did. Before me, I think. I heard her scream two nights ago. Maybe one of the monsters got her. Two nights ago? Yeah, that's probably what happened. You've been all by yourself through this? Yeah, I want my parents to come home now. I think that might be a little while, you know? Oh. Look, I don't know what happened, but I'll look after you until then. What should we do now? We need to find help before it gets dark. Yeah, it's not safe at night. Let's go. Stay close to me. They make their way out of town when they run into Sean Green and... I'm Chet. Lee helps them make way for their truck, where they then go to the Green Farm, the one from the comics, what we ended up seeing in the show. Lee meets Herschel Green. It's Lee. Nice to meet you, Lee. 
I'm Herschel Green. The actor for Herschel in the show, Scott Wilson, sadly died in 2018, so they do this scene differently. If they did adapt it, they'd likely show us Beth, Maggie. We can't leave them. <laughs> Along with the other siblings and members of the farm in season two of the main show, if you care. We then meet Kenny, Catcher, and Duck. Babes Lee. I'm Kenny. Dad, what are no offense? There's a tractor and everything. That's my boy, Ken Jr. We call him Duck, though. Yeah, I call him something similar. Honey, Duck, this is Lee. And, uh, what's the girl's name? Clementine. Clementine. The farm gets its first walker attack. Sean dies and Herschel takes it really well. Get the f What I've always found haunting is that in the comics, by the time Rick and the group arrive at the farm, Sean is already dead. But we see in the game how he died and that Lee and Kenny were there. Clementine watched him die and this was the true start to Herschel putting walkers in the barn. Kicked out by Herschel, Lee, Clementine, Kenny, Cadger and Duck then head to Macon, where we are trapped in a pharmacy. It's here we meet Carly, Glenn, Doug, Lily and Larry. Yeah, that's the Glenn from the comics. So the perfect opportunity to see Steven Yoon again if he wants to. Scott Gimple did mention plans for the Governor, Ezekiel and Glenn when talking about towers before. I don't really care what Steven Yoon said in interviews. I think it's always possible depending on what they ask him to come back for. And no, ageing doesn't really affect it at all. Aaron Paul has been in his 40s and played Jesse Pink when he was in his early 20s many times now. Steven Yoon has also aged really well. But either way, it's not like this story demands Glenn. It was more of a cool comic cameo in the game. This could be any other character. Would be cool though. And yeah, unless made absolutely certain, there's literally nothing to say Glenn couldn't have been here at this time of the outbreak in the show too. In the comics and in the show, Glenn was this kid that knew Atlanta well and went on supply runs. People thought that Jesus was killed off way too early in the main show. So what if, in an adaption like this. He returns. In A New Frontier, we see him all the time. It's one of the coolest things about that season, because of course that's what Jesus did in the show and in the comics. He networked. He was constantly back and forth from the kingdom, and we see him and other members in that kingdom armour. So of course, if this was adapted and they did do more seasons in a season 3, at this time in the show's universe, Jesus would still be alive. But that may be another situation of the actor not wanting to. Fair enough. And don't say it's because he cut all his hair off so he couldn't do it. He'd get a wig. Glenn, Carly and Lee go out on a mission to clear out a nearby motel and save a girl stuck in her room which would make such a good TV sequence. The alarms go off at the pharmacy and they have to escape. Now there is a scene where you have to choose between saving Dog or saving Carly. I don't judge you for what you chose, but if you saved Carly, you're wrong. But no, this brings up the question, how are choices going to be done in a show where it's obviously going to be linear, when a big charm of the games was that's about choices. I mean, there are Netflix choice shows and stuff like that, but I think this would be more linear where the writers choose it, or they even go by what most people chose, because at, at the end of every episode, they told you what most people chose, so they'd go by that, or obviously in Know that they just do it themselves. They escape the pharmacy and make it back to that motel. After episode one, they go on to encounter cannibals at the dairy farm, a train to Savannah, a mysterious stranger for the antagonist, a great cast of characters. This is all the makings of an amazing show. This is what a tale in The Walking Dead should be. This idea is more about season one. I think it stands as its own story. The other seasons require a bit more, especially in regards to budget. You're not thinking it's that or go back. If it does well, which I think it would, even if it was appalling, they would do more. A season 2, 3, 4, where we even see the new frontier and Javier would be amazing to see too, but I think season 1 is realistically what they would end up doing. Again, especially with the success of The Last of Us. It's, it's a big deal. Now, who could play these characters? Well, in the concept art of a season 1, it actually shows someone really similar to Idris Elba as Lee. I think he would be perfect. He's also a big actor, so it would be good for the show. Other than him, Jesse T. Usher. He did an episode in Tales of the Walking Dead, but I don't care. He can play Lee. It's not that deep. There was a small tie-in to the Heath character, though. So, obviously, if he turns out to play, like, Heath's brother or something, then he can't be Lee. But for such a small role, he can play another character, too. As for Clementine, I'm not too sure. I'd care more about that if they did the later seasons, as it would essentially become her show. But as long as it's a good actor, actress, I don't care. The Walking Dead aren't good with kids at all. Just needs to be at least 
least convincing a bonus if they know where they are. I love Kenny, and for some reason, when I think of who would play him in live action, I think of Colin Farrell. I think it's when he was in True Detective, it, it reminded me a bit of that, but that could be awful. I hurt anybody again, I'll come back and butt fuck. Now, how is this more likely to happen now than it was before? Well, I do genuinely think that because The Last of Us did so well, AMC would be looking to do something like this, especially because it's so similar. It's staring them right in the face. Now, there's obviously been all kinds of lawsuits, even between Robert Kirkman and AMC, but the relationship between Telltale and Skybound has actually never been better. In 2018, Telltale Games went bankrupt, so they had to close down. Skybound came in. They took a small group from Telltale, and they called it the Still Not Bitten team. They then completed the rest of The Walking Dead's final season. Then, in 2019, Telltale came back, and recently Skybound funded them millions to make more games, and they retained all their licenses. So not only is another Walking Dead game from them in the future really likely, but Kirkman is now more involved than ever before. So realistically, what do I think could actually happen with this? Well, we've got Telltale Games and Skybound essentially in a partnership. The relationship's never been better. And on the other side, you've got AMC with all the Walking Dead shows coming out. After the Rick Grimes storyline is over, I think they're going to be looking to do so much more. I mean, that's why they're doing Tales, to tell more stories without doing a whole other spin-off show for them. Only two of those stories had any correlation to the main Walking Dead story, or as I like to call it, the Rick Grimes story. Then you've got HBO doing really well with that all already loved the adaption of the award-winning story of the father-daughter relationship in a zombie apocalypse. Remind you of anything? I think genuinely what they would do with this. Just a season one with six to nine episodes could be limited, could be ongoing. The thing with The Last of Us is it wasn't guaranteed success just because the game was already good. It was just guaranteed a good story. It was always just about how the show executed it. And look what happens when a game adaption is done right. You've got this incredible story just waiting to be adapted. What a great way to bring this story to a broader audience. Not to mention there's already a universe in place for the story to be adapted. Did to. We could see other characters from other Walking Dead shows, we could see crossovers, and a lot of people would watch this show, either start watching The Walking Dead or return to it, just to see this get adapted. But, what do you think? Do you think this would make a good show? Who would you want to play Lee, Clementine, or Kenny? Let me know what you think down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching, I'll see you soon.